Hey everybody, it's me again. It's been a while since I've done a woodworking video. The last one I did was the live one where I was just showing how I was setting my shop up. And, um, you know, since my follower account isn't that big, I'm not allowed to do um, live videos anymore. So, I'm shooting this on my phone because I want to stay out of the shot because I think you've seen enough of my ugly face and... Whenever I do one of my personal thoughts videos, it's just me talking to the camera, and, you know, I get sick of my own face. So, anyway, I'm trying to stay behind, and just shoot with my phone, see how that works. If not, then I'll use the old camera. But anyway, um, I was, back when I did my woodworking, hand, my woodworking tools video series, I concluded saying that I can't tell you how to set up your shop or tell you what tools to buy because that depended on your mindset uh your the room the time you have to spend and your budget and that's still very much true but in the intervening years i just kept thinking like maybe i should say something I kept thinking about, like, what are my must-have tools? Like, the tools there where I'm just like, if I didn't have it, I couldn't make anything. And the problem was, that often leads to a rabbit hole. Because you either find yourself paring down so much to the point where, you know, it's like, well, do I really need anything other than, say, like, a knife <laughs> and, and a hammer to... Have it, by the way, that's our new dog you hear barking upstairs. Um, she's six months old. She, she She's still adjusting. But anyway, um, to getting it so broad that you're basically naming every tool in your uh, collection. So I, So I just scrapped it. Just because I don't want to go down either rabbit hole. But I was thinking that, like I said, I still should say something. So, and then I thought about maybe doing an, another ongoing woodworking series. This time calling it Realistic Woodworking. I mean, you, we, you have fine woodworking, popular woodworking. I'd call, call this, um, you know, Realistic Woodworking. Um, well, I haven't completely decided, but if I do, consider this the first video in that series. So anyway, one of, one of the tools that, like, to me is, like, a must-have, the one that I use literally pretty much all the time, is my rip saw right here. Um, to me, that, that's the number one must have um a a panel rip saw let me put it to you that way uh that is one that that is the tool where i where i no matter how far up and down the rabbit hole i go i always like yeah i i use it's one of those things where i can't think of a project where i didn't use it now I used to have two. I had a eight an, an eight point per inch rip saw, and my five and a half point. Um, I sold. I I didn't sell. I actually donated to Habitat for Humanity for their restore the the eight one. Um, and the same was true for um, I had two cross cut saws, a twelve teeth per inch and a eight teeth point inch saw. And in both cases, I got rid of the fine, the finer two saws. I donated them simply because I'm impatient and I want to get through the work quickly. So, you know, the, the more teeth per, I mean, the less teeth per inch you have, the more aggressive the saw, the faster it'll cut. So, I kept the 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 harsher um, uh, two saws. Oh, Alzheimer's is setting it real early. Actually, at 43, you can't say it's setting it early. But, yeah, I, harsh. Uh, you know what I mean. Aggressive 
two saw. So anyway, yeah, my rip saw, that my panel rip saw is definitely a is a must have. Um, my cross cut panel saw, you know, I, I waffled on that. For if you're cutting like cross cutting large panels, it's kind of needed, and if you're doing dimensional lumber, it's needed. But for a lot, of, but. If you're just making small stuff, you know, it's one of those things where I personally could do without. As long as you have, like, one of these saws. This is a, my, this is a back saw I have. It's filed, um, it's a tenon saw. It's filed with cross-cut teeth. And for most small sections, this is more than enough. Then I have this here. This is 14 inch. And then my big 36 inch. Um, so as long as you have like one of these three, you can cross cut to your heart's content. You really don't need the panel saw. But then again, do you really want three different saws? So, but speaking of which, uh, uh, tenon saws, if you're going to make anything with tenons, I suggest you have two. Like so, this is for cross cutting, and this is filed rip. I used to just have a cross cut, but it made when you sawed down the cheeks of the tenon, which is a ripping operation. It just made it really slow. So when I got my second one, it just made the operation a lot easier and a lot faster. And that's why I said about rabbit holes. I mean, yes, I did cut all my tenons with, with a cross-cut back saw, but having the rip cut, the, the back saw file rip cut, it just made it easier. So that's why I said, you know, is having two necessary? And if you don't mind taking a little bit longer on the rip cut, or if you don't mind your cross cuts being a little sloppy, sure. But you know, if if you want your clean cross cuts and fast rips, you kind of need both. But that that's up to you. Um, my dove. I actually have two dovetail saws. This is the dovetail saw I use, and that's my spare. Uh, Stanley doesn't make dovetail. Let me get this out of the way. Stanley doesn't make um, dovetail saws anymore. So when I saw that, I bought a second one. So that way I knew I would always have a dovetail saw um, available. And when this one eventually wears out, uh, I won't have to spend like 100 to 200 dollars on a um, brand new one. Uh, it's file rip tooth. I feel re no real need to have one file cross cut tooth um because i'm either sawing the waste out with a coping saw or i'm chopping it out with a chisel so and if needs be i can always go to my cross cut tendon saw and use that these here i i use them for either really fine cross cuts where it's kind of where it's going to be seen and this one i use for cutting dados as i believe i said um in my original video once again they make it easier but are they necessary like i said that that's up, i mean because you could do it with a uh, panel saw too once again easier but it, it, it's more tools you have to buy so cheap and cheerful route uh easy speedy route um, here are my squares. Let me get that up. Um, yeah, um, I would say, really, if you just wanted to get it right down to it, you just need one combination square. I mean, that would do most of it. I have three, um, a 12 inch, uh, one a 300 one 300 centimeter 
no 300 millimeter sorry 300 centimeter what, what yeah but yeah I I have one for English one for metric because I personally prefer the metric system and I like m building in metric but mo since I'm an American most people aren't familiar with the metric system so making stuff for other people and making things from you know magazines and stuff you know it, it's going to be in the imperial system so and I have this little one uh, a little six inch one like I said you only need one but I have two so because for little for little things I need to mark out or measure the little one works better um, but honestly I for the most part I use my tri square my tri square and my marking gauges really push my combination squares to the side to the point where I hardly ever use either one of them so but I still use them on occasion but I mean if you just want one square go with a combination square um, but yeah you can use a tri square and a, and a marking gauge I actually got three marking gauges and that helps out a lot because I can have them set up to do multiple measurements so my T bevel if you do dovetails this is an absolute necessity if you don't do dovetails you really don't need it dovetails or any type of angled work um, hatchet I hardly ever use it I mean sometimes if I want to hog off a piece of some wood that's really punky or you know messed up I use that to remove material fast but when I don't feel like sawing but yes that's not a necessity hammers basically you only need that one but I like to keep that for construction for like more carpentry type stuff and that's my go-to hammer my 12 ounce Warrington or cross peen hammer and then for like little nails and stuff I use the little one but really you only need one so I think most people would use that that the this type of hammer um, mallet this is I, I'd say use a mallet for chisel work and for putting stuff together this is my little mallet once again you don't need both this one would be fine this is a shingle hammer which I haven't used yet um, I'm hoping to get into more outside construction like s small little structures and you know this is more of an aspirational tool but definitely not something you need um, here's my coping saw I don't have a blade in it I was changing blades and decided to leave one out just leave it out give the frame a little rest um, definitely if you do any sort of curved work or dovetailing this is a must-have um, this is a bow saw I had I, I hate it um, it was cheap and I heard a lot of how good bow saws were but this one, I don't know if it's because it was a cheap one or just because I didn't know how to use it. But yeah, I don't like it. And I hardly ever use it. As a matter of fact, I don't use it. I haven't used it. I tried using it uh, about a month ago. But yeah, I, I don't I don't like it. I, I hate it. I might Maybe I'll splurge for an expensive one then later. But yeah. Um, clamps. You need clamps. That's not even debatable. Um, a tool tool chest here have various tools in. Um, screwdrivers must have, absolute must. That, that that's without doubt or question. Pliers, once again. Pretty necessary. I don't see anything that's debatable. Let's see. My electric my electrical tools. 
Um, yeah. I mean, these are more for I use for make for assembling things. Like I buy, like my weight bench or stuff like that. But you can use them too uh, in woodworking. So yeah. Um, um drilling yeah you need a drill that's that's a i mean you're going to use a drill on a lot of things especially if you use screws or nails brace um a brace actually comes in fairly handy like if you're gonna solve some like if you're doing like in in wood cuts where like a handle where you're not going to saw into it uh being able to bore a big hole to allow a saw blade to get in yeah that's pretty much i mean it, it really comes in handy the breast drill you know what i've had it for probably close to 10 years and i think i've only used it once or twice it's not necessary whatsoever my, my chisels um I have dovetail chisels, skew chisels, mortising chisels. Do you need all those? Probably not. I mean, just having, uh, you know, a simple set of um, of mortising chisels that will allow you to do pretty much all you really need to do. Here are my layout tools, my marking gauges. Once, once again, it's one of those things where if you never used it you probably don't need it you can definitely use a combination square but since buying them and having multiples of them it just makes everything so simpler and easier so you want more tools to make your life easier or do you want less tools to save you money and space that's your call uh, tape measure there's my 8 meter tape measure um, yeah, you definitely need a tape measure. I have a fold-out rule, French curves. Once again, if you don't plan on making anything that has a curve to it, don't need it. Fold-out rule, not really necessary. Um, there are some things that helps, but, you know. My grandfather had one, so I, I took and bought one. But I hardly ever use it. And there's my scratch-all. Once again, not necessary. I mean, you can use a pencil for everything, but I will say, having a scratch all for dovetail work it makes your makes everything a lot cleaner and more precise. So, um, there, my big compass. That's for making large circles, or and I have a compass in here somewhere underneath one of these things. Up oh, right there, it is. Here it is. I mean, I do like making things with curves, so so the compasses and stuff help. All right, my planes. I've actually got rid of, sold some of my planes. I sold my number four, my Lee Nielsen number one, um, my standard angle block plane, and my round bottom spoke shave. So I actually have pared things down. But yeah, you really don't need all of these. And I have changed the way I worked a little bit. I've actually gone to using my jack plane as a four plane and my four plane as a tri plane. I don't like it. I've had some pretty miserable experiences doing that way. So I might go back to using my six as a four plane and my seven, which I currently use as a joiner, um, as a tri plane. Um, but yeah, uh, I will say this, if you're ripping stuff down by hand, you're going to want a joiner plane, either a number seven or a number eight, if you can get your hands on one, because you definitely need to clean up, clean up your saw cuts after you rip, and that is an absolute necessity. As a matter of fact, a joiner plane and a rip saw are pretty much, you got to have both. If you have one, you have to have the other. There, there is no question or arguing that point. Um, 
And this is a jointer plane fence. It's you can only do square make it make your thing um, your edges square with this. I use this as some traditionalists will say that's cheating, but I look at it this way. I'm trying to make my edges square to the face. I'm not trying to be tradi traditionally pure. So, yeah, I don't care what the traditionalists say. I use it, and I'm glad I have it. Um, my number 62 low angle jack plane that's one of those things where you don't need it but it just makes life so much simpler uh, for squaring up uh, the end grain to the edge this is absolutely especially on, on you know small things a block plane does well but like if you're squaring up panels this is I mean to me, this is a, ne a necessity. Uh, my number four and a half smoother. Necessary? No. It, it's good on more figured wood, more on rolly grain. But if you have, but if you have a, a good, um, oh, smooth plane, you you can make do with other things. Matter of fact, I would say you really don't even need a smooth plane. You, I mean. It, you can just sand everything so but here's my number two that's the last thing my mom ever bought me for Christmas before she passed away uh, so I'm never getting rid of that uh, my number three smooth plane which I absolutely love in the door it's my favorite smoother Five and a quarter jack plane, probably my favorite plane of all time. The balance, the feel, it's it's just a dream to use. I love it. And it's good for um, squaring up and straightening out the edges of small small pieces. So that way you don't have to get out a big joiner. Once again, necessary. Eh. Five, uh, five and a half, right here. Not necessary. I hardly ever use it. It was more of like, well, I want it, so I got it. But, yeah, you really don't need it. My number 10 rabbit plane. Um, I've used it a few times. But, once... Yeah, not really necessary. My Philister, 78 Philister plane. I would say that's, a, that's pretty necessary. Um, especially, especially for, um, you know, it, it, if you make the bottoms of, uh, boxes that fit inside the box and not just, like, nailing them in. Router plane, I keep hearing how these are ne necessary tools, like how once you get one, you'll never, you won't remember how you could ever live without one. I hardly ever use it. So... I mean, if I got rid of it today, I would not miss it at all. Uh, my 79 um, side rabbit plane, for me, that's a must-have. It is an absolute must-have. I can't imagine being without it. My 92 and 93 shoulder planes. Um, I use the 92 a little bit more than the 93, but... So, I mean, you can definitely just go with the 92. For wider tenons, the 93 is better, but you can get away with just the 92. But, yeah, I like that. My low angle block plane, probably my second favorite plane. Nah, I'll say it's time for first. I absolutely love it. And, yeah, if you're going to have a block plane, get that block plane, without doubt or question. Um. I have one other plane back here, my scrub plane. Necessary, no, but you know, if you're dimensioning small stock, it it just makes it a lot easier. It also makes it easier to get down humps than a a jack plane or a four plane. 
my combination plane here. If you don't make, if you're if you're just doing straight up square cuts, nailed together, you don't need one. But if you make grooves, dados, and especially if you want to make your own trim, this is a must-have. It, it is an absolute must-have. Sanding block, yeah. Um, spoke shave. If you do curve work. Absolutely, without doubt or question. Convex and concave, the spoke shaves. Eh, not so much, but the square one, absolutely. Um, hold fast, of course. I mean, to me, these are ne really necessary. Since I've started using hold fast, I've hardly ever used clamps to clamp anything down. Um, Sawhorse. I made this this year. And it's one of those things where I didn't have one for a long time. Um, because I never saw the need. But now that I've made one and used one, I'm super glad. I It just makes hand sawing so much easier. Especially cross cutting. So yeah, sawhorse absolutely love it. Bench hook, same deal. I resist it for years, decades really, because I never saw the need. I made one this year and it was like, oh, I was a complete idiot for never making this before. So yeah. And it's really easy to make too. I don't know. I think it was just stubbornness on my part, but yeah, bench hook. Okay. Um, let's see. Putty knives, paint brushes, absolutely need those. Um, my old carpentry teacher said, "Putty and paint make a carpenter what he ain't." But like I said, I'm not trying. I'm just trying to make the best stuff I can. I'm not worried about pleasing somebody else's idea of how things should or shouldn't be done. Obviously, glue, finished material, yeah, all necessary. Um, my number 80 cabinet scraper. Um, yeah, if you're going to deal with, like, really figured wood, I would say this is a pretty must-have item. If, if you, but, you can sand it. I mean, you can sand it, so. Speaking of which, my palm sander... I had to get a new one here recently because my old one finally bit the dust. To me, this is a must-have. Yeah, it's a power tool. I don't care. It's a must-have. I hate hand sanding. And, yeah, it's absolutely a must-have. Um, my little mouse sander here. Um, yeah. Is it a must-have? I would say... 90% 90 per, 90 must have. And I got some other power tools here that I use for like home improvement projects. Uh, I don't use them in my furniture making, but just like I hate making things for the shop, I hate doing home improvement projects. So having power tools just makes it when I have to do that a lot simpler. And since I do sand, I have an air compressor. And it's mostly just so I can blow the sanding dust off of my project so I can finish them. Um, and of course, always your tool care. These are my sharpening stones, honing oil. I have saw files, cabinet, cabinet scraper, sharpeners. So, yeah, if you got tools, you need to take care of them. You need to maintain them. So, my grinder, once again, is an electric grinder because I don't feel like doing the old rotating one with one hand while trying to sharpen with the other one. I'm not that dedicated to be to a tradi to be, to, um, tr tradition. So, you know. Oh, my, my miter saw. Um... I will say I like the old miter saws better. Um, 
but they're inc becoming increasingly more expensive. But uh, the, the new ones work well enough for what I do. So, but if you can find a good, cheap, you um, old one like 1950s back grab that but um if you just use them for like small trim or cuts like that then a new one's just just fine so uh workbench of course you need a workbench um i have a bench just for sharpening it, it makes it easier i like to make a bench for assembly work because this here it only has a one foot wide uh, top which for making anything over a foot wide is a pain so I at least like to make myself a two foot wide uh, assembly bench but you know it works for now and I honestly really don't know where I would get the space for it as you can see um, I'm pretty jammed up right now. Um, that's my kid's workbench. That's my son's uh, bench that he's that he's making. It's puttied up and drying right now. We'll be sanding that tomorrow. So, and not only do I want to make an assembly bench, I want to make a lathe. But between the two, the lathe I think is more important. So I'll have to find a place to put that then. But, um, saw horses in the back. If you don't use power tools, none necessary. Workmate, right back there. I got my heater on it. If you don't use power tool, actually, you know what? I have used it for some things. Um, like for dovetailing wide boards, you can clamp it in that and it acts like a moxen vise. So if you don't feel like making a mox and bice or spending like a whole month's pay on a pre-built one, then that's a that's a good alternative. So anyway, that's just some of what I think are must-have tools. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, this might become an ongoing series. It might not. I can't promise anything. It depends on my mindset. But I will say that I have definitely had a renewed interest in woodworking. I've I've made more projects this year than I probably have in the prior five. And I've had a lot of...